So hi guys, welcome back. Now I'm just going to quickly go over the geometry of the frame in CAD and show you some of the features and parts of the frame that we specified with Joel from Framework. And this was basically all driven by what I wanted out of a bike. Now, what kind of bike is this? I didn't really explain it in the last video. It's not a gravel bike. It's, it's a road bike first and foremost, which will do gravel. So I wanted it to be as versatile as possible. And really the only thing limiting this bike from doing everything is tire clearance and chainring clearance if you want to run a front double chainring and clearance for the front derailleur as well and that's really what defines all categories and kind of all road bike categories um there's no reason why if you get the back end as short as you can for tire clearance you can't have an all road bike be a daily road bike with you know 30 mil tires but you can put 40 mil tires on it if you want to do some sort of light gravel now why did i not just make a gravel bike well I like to run 50 mil tires or bigger on the gravel bike and that would have say like that would have dictated a kind of a different bike with a longer back end and more tire clearance and probably not a double chain ring well i wouldn't be able to use a double chain ring now there are gravel bikes out there where you can use a double chain ring with 50 mil tire clearance my yolio being one of them just however because john's parametric model at the moment is limited to basically doing straight tubes although he can notch them and put dimples in them um, it becomes here quite difficult to kink this tube around the wheel and the chain ring and you need to thin it down in that yoke. Now that's something that I think he might be looking forward to in the future, but at the moment we just stuck with the road bike. And like I said, if I'm going to be testing this as much as I possibly can over winter, when I do ride the gravel, it tends to be kind of like the gnarlier stuff, basically more like single track mountain bike and I would want to be in a 50 mil tire. And I'm not going to be riding that bike so much around the roads because I don't really like lugging you know slow heavy 50 mil tires with lots of tread around the road so i've gone for the road bike this is going to be what i'm going to use the most of this winter and, and it just gives basically a better test bench than the gravel bike which may only get ridden once a week whereas the base i can ride this daily and i can ride this to the gravel I can ride this to the forest and then continue the ride as long as i don't go in too difficult single track uh we should be fine now I'd like to show you a couple of features here. Um, this is a road back end. If I bring up one of the sketches um, with a geometry on it, um, and I don't flip the model upside down, the chainstay length isn't even that big. It's 414 horizontal chainstay length. Um, although there's a quite hefty BB drop of about 80 mil from the horizontal. It's quite a short back end, so not too dissimilar from just a normal road bike basically um but i've managed to fit 40 mil tiring there with about four mil either side and just enough clearance for the uh road double chain set now this is an 11 speed double chain set i couldn't actually get the cad for the 12 speed the latest ones so i'm using the 11 but having fitted a 12 speed uh, altegra chain set on the bike it does clear um with exactly the same clearance as here uh the limiting factor is the distance between the chainstay lug and the bolts actually that stick out a little bit the chainring bolts but there's clearance but you do have to allow for a little bit of flex you have to allow for a little bit of chain suck so on the underside of the chainstay um sometimes you do get chain suck on bikes i'm going to put some 3m mastic you know protective 3m mastic tape on there um obviously the bike's going to need a uh, chainstay protector as well uh, it doesn't have to but for noise purposes if you're riding off-road it should do that now i scolded that to velo for not being supplied with one because for them it's pretty easy to make a you know a molded high high production volume molded plastic part or tpu part something um for john it's a little bit more difficult because he's, he's a one-man band he's making these custom but i still think they should provide a strip of 3m tape to go on chain stay so i recommended that to him um but yeah so this uh is a 40 mil tire um it will run on 30 or 32 mil tires which is my even when i do road bike tts i'm using a 30 or a 32 on the back always actually a 32 and currently that's how the bike is set up but now with 32s and it's still a decent looking road bike um sorry i don't know why the model keeps flipping upside down um but yeah so other things we've gone for is a bit of a mix between all the different bikes in terms of geometry that i like but the main thing i would say is the steeper seat tube angle like i mentioned in um one of the videos before 
Now that's to get me further over the bottom bracket. I've got quite long femurs and long legs and a proportionally a short body. And a lot of like Western tall guys have that body shape, which is funny because a lot of the XL bikes that we're forced onto don't support that shape. So the seat is really far set back. Um, your hip gets impinged because your butt's so far back. And when you're climbing, you don't really feel like you can get your body weight over the bottom bracket. And obviously when you're stood up, it doesn't matter. But when you're seated climbing for long periods of time, and I love climbing, I'm not built for it, but I do like riding up hills. And I do like doing training efforts up hills rather than on the flat because it's easier, it's far safer, um, rather than hurtling through traffic at like 40k an hour. Uh, a steeper seat tube angle is what I've always wanted. Now on my TCR, my rim brake TCR is 72. Um, and on the latest TCR that I've got is 72 and a half. And I've drawn these seat positions here um, at these different angles. So we've got 72 and a half, 75 and 74 and a half. Um, and then at the top here, I've got my seat height. So this is basically 840 mil, so my seat height. And you can see between the seat tube at 72 and a half, so the TCR one, and the current one, which I've got on this, which we went for 75, is a 35 mil forward shift to the saddle so that's about that much and that's going to mean that I don't need to run the saddle shoved forward like I always do um, and I would like to actually get it further forward so with this the saddle will be exactly clamped in the middle of the rails and this 75 was dictated by that that want to get the saddle clamped in the middle of the rails and it won't look so goofy anymore and that's going to go further forward if I want to even I'm doing like a really hilly day I can get it even further forward and, and tip the nose down and why bike fitters don't fit people on the slope if they're going to do something like the, the you know, the Maratona or the Tap or the, um, the, the you know, the Oak route or something. Why are the bike fitters not fitting the bike for climbing? Like when it's on the incline, everything changes. Center of gravity goes back. Um, you, a lot of people scoot forward on the saddle um, when they're climbing. Then if the bike is set up to, to do, you know, fit like that in the first place, you wouldn't need to make those stupid adaptations where you know, you're now longer supported on your sit bones, you're sitting on the nose, the saddle, and all this sort of stuff. And it just doesn't sit right with me. Anyway, other features on the frame. So, yeah, we've got that forward offset to the saddle. Um, 550 is the seat tube length. That's a very, very short seat tube length. Basically, in an old school bike, that would be like me riding a 55 centimeter freight. So, like, three sizes too small. But I wanted a, you know, a fairly short seat tube, like it is on the TCR, or the very sloping top tube to give me more seat post sticking up because I want that extra whip from the seat post. Now, if I find that whip, that, you know, compliance, that bend from the seat post too much with a carbon seat post, I can go and fit a Thompson Elite seat post, which is seriously stiff, thick walled aluminium seat post, which will give me less fore and aft deflection under my body weight when I hit a bump. And this is what I was saying. I like these type of bikes with the round seat tubes, the 27.2 uh, seat posts, because you can tune that comfort of the bike. With the modern bikes, you know, the aero bikes with the integrated uh, aero seat posts, you're basically stuck with what they've decided. You're stuck with that stiffness. You're stuck with that deflection, and you can't tune that. So for me, I've pretty much gone for the shortest seat tube feasibly I can get away with, so I can tune the stiffness and the compliance and everything of the seat post. So that's why I've gone for that. And I think I think aesthetically it looks a bit nicer as well. It, when you've got a sloping top tube on a, on a really big frame size, which this still is, um, then it looks a bit smaller. The bike doesn't look so much like a gate. If you look at something like a Java Propel with Tavello that I've got with pretty much a straight uh, horizontal top tube, I just don't understand why you would have a horizontal top tube. Um, it gives you less space to throw the bike left and right when you're out with the saddle. And... It also gives you a lot less seat post sticking out, so a lot less deflection. So the deflection of a cantilever, which the seat post is, comes up with the length cubed. So just a little bit more seat post sticking out will give you a lot more deflection at the saddle and, and perceived comfort. That's the, that's the thing. I hope it's not going to be too whippy. Now, John's tubes are fairly flexible in that plane anyway. So like I said, if it's too whippy, we'll put a stiffer seat post in there. But it's nice to have the option. Um, now the other thing is the stack is about 40 mil bigger than my TCR and it's not going to put me in a completely different position because I'm quite happy with the height of the TCR front end but I've got like a good amount of spaces in there about 35 mil spaces this I won't need to run any spaces so I can directly realize the stiffness of the head tube assembly with the stem right on top of the bearings and I'm not hanging the stem off you know 
a, you know, a section of steerer tube that's that long because, you know, you're losing a direct connection with the bike. So this will be slammed, no spaces. We've designed it for the stack that I've always wanted and cannot get off the peg. If I probably could get off the peg if I bought like an ultra, ultra, you know, comfortable endurance bike, then it wouldn't have the other features that I wanted. So this bike is a bit of a wrong rule. The other thing is quite a slack, um, quite a slack steering angle. Uh, I think we went for 72, I need to check it, but I can't, I think it was 72, and that just gives me a bit of a longer front end, a bit longer wheelbase, a bit more clearance on my toes when, I'm, when I am riding the bigger 40mm tyres if I take it on gravel without making the bike too long. I think a lot of modern bikes are actually too long when they're in the bigger sizes, and you're, um, after having, you know, bike fits and stuff, you're your shoulder angle goes out beyond 90 and you start to get an achy upper back and an achy neck. It's good to keep, you know, those elbows down and in towards you a bit more, I think. Um, but you can still have an old wheelbase when just raking out the front. Now, there are handling drawbacks associated with, you know, a slacker head angle, like wheel flop when you're cornering side to side. But honestly, you know, when, when you ride, like me, when you ride mountain bikes with... Um, head tube angles in the mid 60s like 72 it's, it's going to be absolutely fine you just won't notice that and um yeah i mean how often are you cornering a bike leaned over on road not often whereas on a, on a downhill or trail bike you're, you're doing it a lot and wheel flop just doesn't seem to be a problem um there's a fairly high rise on on the on the framework stem aesthetically i'm not a massive fan of that it would be nice to have it flatter but then if you don't have that rise, you need to make the head tube even longer or you're into adding space. And so it's a compromise of aesthetics and that's about it. So yeah, not a lot more I can say, to be honest, the, um, tubes on this model are not current. So the tubes on the bike behind me are oval shaped. So the down tube is an oval and the top tube is, is quite an extreme oval or an ellipse. And that's to give the top tube a bit more um bending stiffness out of plane but more compliance vertically so if you look at the frontal impact iso test that john's doing when there's a front load on the fork the top tube can bend a hell of a lot and that's helped by the thinner section well the reduced uh, height of the top tube in the ellipse orientation uh it gives it a lot of comfort or a lot of deflection in that sense and it's the same with the down tube as well but the width is kept to give it the out plane bending stiffness um, now in the interview, John and I spoke about the, uh, down tube potentially not being stiff enough. And he said, well, actually the down tube is largely in torsion, um, when you're pedaling because you've got an offset, you know, torque at the bottom, trying to swing the bottom bracket under the frame. I kind of agree, but when you consider the frame as a whole, and my argument was that the down tube does need a lot more zero degree fibers running the whole length of the down tube to add stiffness in that direction. Yes, the bike goes into torsion, but it's not the individual tube members going into torsion about their own axis. It's some, some other axis that goes through the whole frame, probably in the middle of the frame somewhere, and the whole frame twists in torsion. But the individual tubes, the components of that frame torsion are actually tube bending and torsion as well. So it's, it's a superposition of all these other types of forces. It's not just pure torsion on the tubes. And then, it, you know, in that case, a, a 45 degree wrapped filament wound tube would work just like a drive shaft. So if you've got a, if you've got a carbon fiber prop shaft in a motorsport application or marine application, where you want a light, stiff, very stiff torsion, remember you would just use 45 degree fibers wrapped down the axis of the tube, the embedding would be very, very floppy. That's in pure torsion. The bike frame is not, the tubes are not in pure torsion because they're connected into another type of structure. So the torsion acts about a neutral axis somewhere along the sort of midline of the frame. And that torsion of the frame is made up of tube bending. You see what I mean? So the top tube is trying to bend one way and the down tube is trying to bend the other way. So I still maintain, I think these tubes need to be stiffened up in the zero degree UD case, but this is all speculation at this point because I haven't actually ridden it. <laughs> so, um, there we are. Yeah. Um, what more can I say? Uh, the fork. So the fork is an envy fork. It's like they're all road fork. The fork will fit up to like a 45 mil tire if you really pushed it. 
Um, obviously, I'm going to keep the tire sizes the same front and rear, but I might play around with having a slightly bigger front tire if I'm doing really like gnarly gravel stuff. Obviously, that's going to tip the whole geometry off kilter a little bit because the front of the bike will go up. Um, the cockpit, there's not a lot I can do with that because it's already slammed. Um, but yeah, I'm going to be limited to a 40 in the back, I think, at the moment. I've asked John, I said, look, is there a possibility to make me a gnarly gravel bike as well as this? So single chain ring, massive tire clearance, really long uh, front center, very steep C2 general, and he hasn't poo-pooed it yet. So we'll see um, if we can do a really gnarly gravel build. Um, but yeah, this is an all road bike. I think the categories of road bikes can, can be merged into one. I think, you know, endurance, aero, lightweight, like, it's just marketing. Like, there's no reason for ninety percent of people if you're not at the top end of racing, so you're not after like the last single digit watt savings or grams. Most road bikes could just be built in one, and this is what this is. So, I hope you enjoyed that little deep dive into the geometry. Can't wait to build it up. Let me know if you've got any suggestions for parts and specifically the seat posts. If you've got a scale in your head of what's a stiff carbon seat post and what's a not stiff carbon seat post, let me know in the comments. And yeah go for it in the comments what should i be building this up with um cheers see you in the next one